market. So you grew up in in, in a poor family, in a in a very large family, and a very religious uh, community. Um, what has been your path from, uh, you know, a community that's far from power, that's far from influence, to being, you know, one of the youngest Congress uh, people in 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 Brazil? How how did you go from from A to B? So uh, my story is a story about education from the beginning to the end. Um, I come from a very typical family uh, in Sao Paulo. Both my parents, uh, their families uh, come from the Northeast, which is the poorest uh, region of Brazil. My mom, she got pregnant when she was in high school. So, uh, and she was not supported by my biological father. She then met my father, who was the most amazing person I've met in my life, but who was a, a very sick person. So my father had uh, bipolarism. Can I say it like that? Uh, he had a uh, drug addiction and so like uh, very normal to my context, very hard in general. And for us, uh, church was always a very uh, important presence. And I think that's what make, make me understand that you cannot just say that oh, the problems with the church, because the church is also the solution in those poor communities. So they were the ones who supported us with food when we needed uh, it was in church that I spent all my weekends doing service and learning and so on. And I had a very unique opportunity with a math Olympiad when I was 11 years old. Uh, this national big math Olympiad that was created uh, by the Ministry of Science Technology, Eduardo Campos, during uh, the Lula government. And I got a scholarship because of a medal in the private school and my life changed for good. I had, and so you, how were you selected to participate in this math Olympiad? You were sort of in a state primary school and some teacher realized that you were talented at math or what was sort of even the path to get to the math Olympiad? So uh, it's a very great policy because uh, all public school students are <laughs> not forced, but they are invited to participate. So it's the biggest Olympiad in the world. Uh, the numbers have reached to 18 million students participating. So I was just like... Uh, normal day in school, I had a great math teacher who decided to prepare some students to that competition, but no one really understood what it was about. And I got first a silver medal and then a gold medal when I was in sixth grade and uh, seventh grade. And just one comment about the Bolsonaro government, they have cut all the funds uh, for the Olympiads. And in Brazil, parliament, uh, MPs, Congress members, they uh, tell how a part of the budget will be used. And every year I put uh, a huge junk of my budget in those Olympiads because they do transform lots of lives. So that's how I end up uh, in a private school for scholarship. It didn't take so much time for my teachers to understand that I was in a special condition <laughs> that I would need more than the scholarship. So they started to take care of my uh, food, and my uh, public transportation tickets and the clothes that I didn't have to attend things. So I had many great uh, teachers who were my friends and my supporters. They were the ones that told me about Harvard and, and MIT, who got uh, this scholarship for me to study English when I was in high school, who supported me to participate in all sorts of Olympiads. So I received over 40 medals. I wanted to be an astrophysicist. I traveled the world competing for Brazil. And I had that very strong, like I'm gonna be a scientist and that, that's my life. And then uh, four days after I got into Harvard with a, a full scholarship, I lost my father to drug addiction. And of course, um, it was really hard. And for a few days, I gave up on the idea of attending Harvard or any college at all. But again, my teachers were there for me and they were very emphatic in saying that if I didn't go, it might take very long until another student coming from where I come from had the same opportunity. I went, I switched my major from astrophysics to government. And I decided at some point that I wanted to work with education to the rest of my life. I have been a teacher. I have uh, organized young uh, people movements. I have been a radio commentator to speak about education. I've done a few things. And at some point I was very pissed off with politics and politicians. 
I was very tired of knocking on doors and people receiving me during the elections and not receiving me afterwards, saying they would do something and giving up later, uh, or just not caring and like acting as if they didn't care because they didn't attend public school, their children didn't attend public school. And I think this desire to, to run, to affiliate to a party and to run came more as a an answer, like, okay, I'm fed up, <laughs> how you run? And I, I was sure I wouldn't win, but I just could not keep be acting as if I believed things would change uh, if it was not through politics. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I got there.